Welcome to another Klein Chiropractic video. This one's going to be on walking. And before we can understand walking, you got to follow me down the dark rabbit hole. So first off, I've said this before, we can't fix a problem unless we understand it or we don't know we have one. So we've got to understand that we have a problem. We need to realize it. And then B, we need to figure out its origin and how it's affecting us today and where we're at. So there's misconceptions on exercise, physical therapy, medicine, chiropractic, massage. In a lot of ways, for a lot of people, they only fix symptoms. So we're going all the time, going to your chiropractor. And yes, we can fix causes. There's causes. Right here is a cause on the left. It's up here in the neck. Maybe that's affecting that whole spine raising the left shoulder higher, right shoulder lower, kinking up all this stuff. Okay, fix that. That's fixing a cause, right? So a lot of people I say on the left, this is my job, and your job is to fix this, that increased curve, the head's all forward. So what we need is that ear, shoulder, hip, and one straight line, not hip in line with the shoulder or hip in line with the head and the shoulders way out here so look at that what is that that's a big s right big s now i can go through and give examples for the rest of these like massage medicine physical therapy but if we're not addressing the causes seen here on the right which is muscular imbalance all we're doing is fixing symptoms we're never addressing the actual cause Cause. What are the causes am I talking about? Kimasabi. Yes, I had to look about to spell that. And what do we blame for this? We don't blame ourselves. We blame genetics. We blame age. We blame whatever. We'll blame whatever. We're Americans. We're good at it. Let's blame life. Lifestyles. So if life is causing our issues, we have to change how we're living it. We're doing something wrong. And what's the first step? Exactly. What we're talking about. Walking. Steps. That's the first steps. Walking. You're doing it wrong. So Nate been telling me that I've been walking wrong my whole life and I never knew. Well, yeah, I didn't realize that all these, these problems and chronic disabilities, you didn't think something was going wrong? I just, I just thought it was age and my genetics. Does everybody else have these problems too? Yeah, a good majority of Americans have these problems. It's a very sedentary life. How are we going to tell them? We're going to make a video about it, Keanu. We're going to make a video about it. The Matrix. So let's look and what I call the lawnmower posture. And yes, I went out and pushed a lawnmower that wasn't on. For your sakes, I did it for you guys. Play that. All right. So Nate's pushing the lawnmower. As we can see, the feet are pushing off behind. The hips are behind the shoulders. So we're at an angle. Now that hip is kind of lifted up. The butt's sticking out. What's working here more? The quad muscles are working. A lot of the calf too. So we got that really S-shaped looking spine that we saw before. The head's forward. And we got the butt sticking up. Let's see that again. Push in there. Like we're always pushing. There's some people walking like this. So this posture we see is the one on the left. We call that anterior pelvic tilt. So you can think of it as clockwise rotation if you're viewing it from the right. Some people walk like this with their feet out in front of them and the tailbone really tucked. That's the opposite. We can see how there's no curve now. We got a flat back. The feet are stepping out in front. They're kind of leaning back, right? They're the opposite angle. The lawnmower guy was pushing the other way butt sticking out and now the butt's tucked up underneath so we'll call this a sway back posture so we got anterior pelvic tilt which is the lawnmower guy pushing that lawnmower all the time quads are super short hamstrings overstretched increased lumbar curve then we got mr posterior pelvic tilt the hips are swayed forward and we got the tailbone tucked underneath the hamstrings are very tight so anterior pelvic tilt 
also known as lower cross syndrome or athletic hip. Now if it's posterior pelvic tilt, we call that lazy posture or sway back posture. So overall we want these three points in line. So we got your ear, your shoulder, your hip, your lateral malleolus all in line. So what can happen, the hips could sway forward, putting your weight into your toes. Then we get that posterior pelvic tilt, tucked back, tailbone's tucked. And what the body has to do, because you're going to fall on your face if you don't fix this, is you got to have an increase in your thoracic curve. And your head is going to respond by going forward. So let's look at that when we're sitting. Good posture. This is the lazy posture. The hips are out in front of the shoulders because we can't comfortably sit with that curve because it's flattened. Let's look at this other posture now. This is anterior pelvic tilt. This is the lawnmower posture. So the butt and tailbone are lifted up. In this case, we have a very tight psoas muscle and hip flexor here. And let's see this as it gets worse. Belly sticks out. You've seen that beer belly before. Look at that. So this is your upper cross, lower cross syndrome. So how do we fix that? It's all about pelvic musculature using different muscles. We're not stiffening everything up. We're not leaning. To maintain this posture, we have to correct the bad one we're in. And forget about the neck for now. So my job, fix the side view. But nobody but you is going to fix this problem or that problem. Here we go. What's this one? What's her hips doing here? We've got that increased thoracic curve. Hips are out in front of the shoulders. Shoulders are internally rotated. Heads forward. Doesn't look happy. Doesn't look at all these problems that come with it. So you're telling me that this is normal? This is not a cause? It's a big cause. It's a cause of a lot of things. It's not just about posture and looking good. I wish I knew that as a kid. I didn't. And now I'm here to tell you about it. So here we go again. Well, actually this is the main thing we're going to talk about is... I'm going to talk now. You be quiet. So we got anterior pelvic tilt, which is our lawnmower posture. Hips getting behind us, pushing off with our toes. Posterior pelvic tilt, we're tucked in. Tailbone's really tucked because the hamstrings are pulling down. Anterior pelvic tilt, increased curve, hyperlordotic curve, posterior pelvic tilt, tailbone tucked, flat and lumbar spine. They're opposites, right? That means we've got opposite muscle balance. Now we can have the sway back. So posterior pelvic tilt go into sway back. It can also be anterior pelvic tilt. I've seen it both. We've got the knees hyperextended on that one. So we need to find a way to bring ourselves to neutral, but first we have to figure out what are we? So here's looking at the muscles. I know we've been avoiding it, but let's look at the muscles now. So you have the erector spinae. Now these run from your pelvis up along your spine into your low back where the ribs start. So if these are very tight, they're going to act like a bowstring, and your spine is the wooden part of the bow. So that's getting pushed forward. These are tightening up, increasing that big S-shaped curve we got down at the bottom. And that tailbone's going to be lifted. So you can see how the arrow is going here, and that pelvis goes anterior. It's dropping down. And that's that psoas you were talking about, the iliopsoas. So that runs attached to the inside of the pelvis, so it's pulling that down. It's pulling the spine with it. And you got these little nerves supposed to be going through these holes. So if this curve is affected in either way, not only is you, are you going to look funny, but your nerves aren't going to be working right. And that's why we got those symptoms we were looking at before with the girl standing there. She had all these problems. Why is that? Because it's not healthy for our nerves to be in certain postures. Let's look at the opposite here, the posterior pelvic tilt. So here... Got that erector spine or muscles 
Ere oh, sorry, the erector abdominis muscle is very tight, lower on the pelvis, attaching to that pubic symphysis area. So pulling the pelvis up, rocking it back, tailbone's getting tucked. So a lot of times we'll actually have a tight gluteus muscle here, followed by a tight hamstring muscle. So that's kind of opposite. Whereas the quad was tight here, now we have the hamstring tight. So this will change how you're walking. We'll get to that in a second here. So what do we got here? S-shaped spine, right? So we call this lower cross syndrome for a reason. Like we were talking about with the muscles before, we have a pairing of weak muscles. Abdominals are weak, the belly sticks out, there's nothing there holding it in. And the gluteus maximus is weak. So what happens is the curve increases and the pelvis gets pulled forward by the psoas and the quad. We call this athletic hip because these are the people with their hips when they walk, they're pushing off behind them like they're like running up a mountain or pushing a lawnmower. So here we can see how posterior pelvic tilt, the suede hips, is going to be walking out with his hips in front of him. And you think, how could somebody walk like this? I'm telling you, you do. <laughs> I watch you. You're walking out with your hips in front of you and you're never pushing back behind you, which is the opposite. This guy's always like he's like doing lunges everywhere. He's pushing off behind him all the time, pushing that lawnmower. So you need to bring yourself, if you're anterior pelvic tilt, you need to force a posterior pelvic tilt to correct your issues. So if you're pushing off behind you, you need to be walking with your feet out in front of you to correct that issue. And if you're posterior pelvic tilt, you need to bring yourself into anterior pelvic tilt. Now this isn't leaning. It's not about leaning. It's not about throwing your torso forward. When you're standing, the torso should be in line with the hips. So what you're doing is you're contracting these muscles. So if I wanted to force anterior pelvic tilt, if I'm a sway backer, if I have posterior pelvic tilt, I need to strengthen my iliopsoas. I need to strengthen my erector spinae muscles. I need to strengthen my quad because they're weak. And not only will it be tough to walk like this, it's tough because you're fighting against this. If you're posterior pelvic tilt, these muscles are tight. So not only do you have to stretch these guys out to get into this position, it's going to be hard because these muscles here are weak. So let's run that way back through a filter. We'll pretend now that we're anterior pelvic tilt. We need to get posterior. So we have to fight against all these tight muscles. So one way to approach this is, A, we need, always need to warm up, but then we need to stretch first. We need to stretch the tight muscles so we can more easily use the weak muscles. So for anterior pelvic tilt, we need to do uh, psoas stretches. We need to do knees to chest. We need to do uh, stomach vacuum, compressing, flattening the spine. We need to do quad stretches. And then we'll be more able to activate the abs and the hamstrings and the glutes. Because the glutes, when you tighten your butt, what happens? Your tailbone tucks underneath you, right? When you tighten your stomach, you flatten the lumbar curve. When you tighten your hamstrings, you straighten that leg if it's anterior. And there's other things you can do. There are other exercises, but you're walking. You're on your feet already. You might as well utilize that time to be beneficial for you. Because I'm always hearing, I don't have time for the gym, Nate. I got a busy life. Well, all right. Well, you do get out of bed at some point during the day. I'm hoping you're already telling me you're busy. Put this stuff in the back of your mind. You're on a phone call. Stand up. Work on this pelvic tilt stuff. Try to correct your issues. If you don't know what you are, you don't know if you're anterior or posterior, come and see me. I will tell you happily. I do classes three times a week. Saturday is twice a day. We go over this stuff. Simple. You can sit there in the back with your arms crossed and just watch if you want. You don't even have to get involved. So here they're doing planks. So a person with a posterior pelvic tilt will take this position. 
the first to answer pelvic tilt, they'll probably sink in like this. So Nate, how do I correct my plank? You're going to go in the opposite way. Let's say your posterior pelvic tilt, you try to force anterior pelvic tilt. So you're increasing the curve using those quad muscles using those erector spinae muscles all right need them answer your pelvic tilt i have an s-shaped spine my butt sticks out like donald duck all right well tuck that tailbone in mr duck flatten that spine tighten that core use those hamstrings same goes for push-ups all right here's another uh anterior pelvic tilt and you can find a lot of this stuff online I give you I give people uh, video lists if you want some actual corrections but walking is the main thing here and we'll, we'll go back over that at the end in case you're still confused I'm always confused anterior pelvic tilt so hanging on to a bar doing a squat now notice something don't do this if you're um, post your pelvic tilt but you want the knee in line with the toe so he's doing a good job there and he's flattening that curve. So he's probably got a big hyperlordotic curve. And if he does a squat, his butt's going to stick out like Donald Duck. But if he's holding on to a bar, he can help force his butt down, tuck the tailbone. And really, you can see how the, the quad is being overstretched in this position. So that's good because he's probably got a tight quad. That's why he's doing these exercises. All right. That way he won't fall back. What you need to learn is to integrate this stuff into what you're already doing during your day. Let's say you don't have time for the gym, but you have horribly anterior pelvic tilt. Hey, you could do this while you're putting your clothes in the washing machine or whatever. You can find little things to do throughout your day to correct the issues you have without going to the gym. Here's another thing for anterior pelvic tilt. Sit with your knees bent and you're trying to rotate that hip right into posterior you're tucking the tailbone you're sucking in the stomach and so if she brought her knees up that would do it as well flattening the lumbar curve there but not if you're posterior so here's for posterior pelvic tilt this is another good picture here we can see how the hips will not line up with the shoulders the hip is more in line with the head right so if we drew a line from that hip, where would it be? It'd be in the toes. So our weight's in our toes. So who gets plantar fasciitis? A lot of people would sway back to. Why is that? Tight hamstrings. Tight hamstrings. Calf's going to get stretched, right? A lot of tension under there. So what we've got to do, we've got to strengthen the psoas and bring those hips underneath us. And once we get the foot and the hip in line, the rest of the body tends to fall right in place. So here's a good uh, correction on a foam roller, because they're putting that foam roller right on that hypercarphotic part of your spine. He's supporting his head, because you, you don't want the head hanging back. And then he's allowing his butt to drop into anterior pelvic tilt. So A, his shoulder now is in front of his hips. So this is why you don't want to do this if you're anterior pelvic tilt. A, it's going to be easy because your body wants to go that way, but it won't do you any good. Your, your hips are already behind your shoulders. It's kind of making sense now, right? Here's another squat. So we got the posture pelvic tilt. I see this a lot. People are like, eh, hey, the squat's easy. Look, I go all the way to the ground. I'm like, look at your knees. Like, this is nothing. I see where their knees are way out here. Your knees are in China and they're squatting, you know, in California. It makes no sense. Got the toe here. You want the hip, knee, and toe relatively in line. So you can see how the, the knee's going out in front. So we want a slight arch we don't want to be too tucked so you want to force the curve good bad and another thing for posterior pelvic tilts because we already know hamstrings are tight 
Foam roll. I don't have a foam roller. I can stretch it. Now be careful when you're stretching the hamstrings. People are like, ah, yeah, touch my toes. That'll stretch those hammy rings. Yeah, no. Um, think about it. You're touching your toes. What's your hips doing? They're rocking posterior major. That's, that's really going to overstretch your low back. So you're harming one thing. You're, you're overstretching an already overstretched weak muscle to try to get your hamstring stretched. So you really got to isolate. Foam roller is a great way to isolate a muscle. So when she's doing it, she's preventing that flat back by trying to keep a curve and her chest lifted. And she's going to stretch outside, inside, getting that hamstring. Now if she bent over, grabbed her toe, what's she going to do? She's going to round that lumbar spine, isn't she? I see this all the time. And you're doing yourself no good, son. No good if you're doing that way. Can't know what to borrow from Peter to pay Paul, right? That's what mom says. Mom's always right, you know. So walking again. Let's see, let's see. Let's look at Nate. So... You could do this walk if you're anterior pelvic tilt. If you're pushing a lawnmower all the time, you want to walk with your feet out in front of you. Obviously, you don't want to be leaning back, but really trying to engage your core. Core is engaged, tailbone's tucked, lumbar spine is flattened. We're going to be using hamstrings more in this position. Get back there. All right, he's pushing the lawnmower. The hips are behind the shoulders. Too much curve, but it is a correction. It's like this isn't bad posture, right? It really isn't bad posture. It's just different posture. All right, one more time. Let me say it again. For posture pelvic tilt, you want to take on the lawnmower posture as a correction. So you're walking kind of like a bodybuilder, like you're pushing a lawnmower. And then you want to be more straight walking out in front of you, picking up the toe towards your nose, taking the steps out in front of you to correct anterior pelvic tilt. So before you can begin this corrective walking, you first have to learn how to utilize the muscles that are weak in your body. And I'll show you that here. Now this is one of the hardest things for people to get because it's training your muscles how to fire individually. You're using a certain set. So you're not throwing your torso forward and backwards using muscles to rock your pelvis forwards and backwards and I'll explain that in a second but I want you to see the girl over here on the left so she's throwing her torso back and forward because she hasn't learned how to fire those muscles yet so she's just shifting her torso forward and back and that's not pelvic tilt at all so just leaning forwards and backwards is just hinging on the joints. What we want to do is activate the pairs of muscles that control anterior pelvic tilt and then activate the pairs of muscles that will control posterior pelvic tilt. That's a major exercise. It looks really silly and stupid. But doing that all day really works. It's three abs, tightening in, curling your tailbone underneath you without moving your torso. See that? Moving your upper body a little bit to try to keep that. I put my hands on my on my hips too to help me so you can feel that little. It's tricky, right? Yeah. Who knew such little motions were tricky? That's that ab workout. So the tailbone tucks underneath, the abs push in, then the opposite, you lift the butt. It's more than the abs, the quad, and the hamstring can play a big role. So when the, this drops down, butt goes up, the quads are pulling that down. And then when I pull up, the abs are sucking in. The hamstrings are pulling the butt down. So it's the opposite. Keep my knees straight. Not that knee. Uh, it's okay to bend a little bit. When you lift up, uh, the quads pulling down. In the back, these guys are pulling up. So you know, some people are stuck in either one of these positions. So you know, that one position is really hard. For me, it's tight in my tail. If these are really tight, we can resist that motion. Now people would sway back with the hips are out in front of us, they have trouble doing this. I have really trouble doing that. So you probably need to do more of the this one. So I can like flattening that one more spine, especially if you've got a deep curve, it's like 
want to go. So we're doing that on the ball too. So, so you want to bring that stomach in. So most people they stand with their chest low, the head's forward. So you bring the stomach in, raise the chest, and that brings the head over the shoulders, and they just drop back naturally. You're not stiff, you're not lifting up like this, just in, and then you want to squeeze the butt a little bit, tuck it underneath you. And you want to straighten your knees. That's step number five there. So anytime we're doing an exercise, we're getting in that position. 